English? <laughs> uh, my name is Alex Lesnik, and uh, I work for um, uh, device lock, a company that uh, develops uh, the like named uh, endpoint data leak prevention solution. And um, uh, the uh, probably already a year and a half, uh, our clients and our prospects are asking us about GDPR in general, and specifically, they ask about uh, what does uh, data protection by design means, and uh, 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 would uh, DLP technologies be, be useful uh, or necessary uh, for implementing, for, for organizations to become compliant with this uh, data protection by design. Uh, principle which was enacted first in, in the history of, of legal uh, of, le of laws by GDPR, uh, and uh, this presentation. In this presentation, I will uh, shortly, uh, regretfully, that's only 25 minutes. Uh, I will shortly uh, provide you with the status of, of uh, the process around uh, data protection by design enforcement, and uh, then I will concentrate on, on on the main question of this presentation, which is: uh, Is DLP uh, technology needed for uh, for uh, the system to become compliant with this particular principle or not? Uh, uh, in uh, if, we, if you look at the, the article 25 of, of GDPR, we see the how they uh, articulate uh, this uh, privacy by uh, protection data protection by design principle. And this, uh, basically, uh, this principle uh, that has been enacted in Article 25, it is an application and ma a mapping of well-known privacy or privacy by design principles. And um, uh, uh, together with them, of course, uh, privacy engineering to the GDPR context. Uh, privacy is a, 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 in my view, it is a wider, a wider notion than just uh, data protection. Even though the data protection is made uh, for privacy, so that's why, that's why probably I don't know for sure, but that's, that's why uh, those who wrote GDPR they do not use uh, the term privacy. They use the term data protection, meaning that data. Uh, meaning the data are personal data because this is what GDPR about. Um, and um, if you look at the meaning, meaning is very simple. It, it, it looks like it is, it is very simple, but it is very difficult to implement. And the meaning is that protection of personal data shall be considered uh, and designed by system uh, uh, by the system developers as a core feature, as a function of data processing. And uh, it is never before that uh, security or other, you know, uh, reliability, for example, um, requirements, they uh, were considered as functional requirements. This is, um, uh, these are non-functional requirements, although they are important. But in this case, uh, GDPR enacts and requires that when uh, system designers and system architects, when they develop the system, uh, they uh, took into uh, they uh, implement every data protection feature as a core function of this system. And system is ready only when core business functions, application functions, and data protection features, uh, they are both ready, developed, and QA tested. And um, um, those technologies that are used for implementing data protection controls or privacy controls, if you would like. Um, uh, and um, these uh, technologies are collectively called uh, privacy enhancing technologies, PETs. Uh, though this is not the language that GDPR uses again. 
I don't know why, because pets, uh, this is a very well-known uh, uh, notion, and um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, scientific works has been done in this area. Uh, again, if you look at the uh, pets definition, uh, it, 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 it is uh, obvious that that's something that uh, pets technologists in their scope, they're wider than just data security because data security usually are associated with the, fun, uh, with the goals of um, confidentiality, inter uh, integrity and availability, so-called uh, CIA triad. Uh, uh, while um, privacy technologies uh, and privacy uh, engineering, they, uh, they add uh, um, more goals, more objectives, which must be achieved to ensure privacy. Uh, it, it is uh, minimization, it is other things that uh, do not allow, prevent from, uh, in my case, my personal information to become available, although this won't be a data security breach, it will be my privacy breach, which is also very important. That's why GDPR has been written, actually. Um, and, um, uh, of course, some data security technologies uh, can be used as uh, privacy-enhancing technologies. Uh, for instance, encryption and uh, Pseudonymizations, they are uh, directly mentioned in uh, GDPR, although GDPR claims to be uh, a technology neutral uh, law. Uh, what, is the, what is the status of the process around uh, data protection by design uh, principle? Um, First of all, I, uh, I would like to uh, note that GDPR assumes that privacy engineering is used for developing GDPR compliance systems. This is the major, basically, uh, thing that system, uh, system designers and system architects uh, should take into consideration. Uh, and uh, uh, in, the, in the scope of privacy engineering, which is a specific you know, application of general system, systems engineering, the uh, special accent in GDPR uh, is made on privacy risk assessment as the key uh, component of uh, privacy engineering processes. And, uh, uh, but again, GDPR does not use uh, usually usual language like privacy risk assessment. They uh, use the language uh, which uh, names risk assessment data um, uh, data protection impact assessment uh, specificity. Uh, and um, of course, uh, the DPIA. Uh, is a well, well, uh, you know, useful tool and process because it enables organizations to translate or to to learn, to study, and th then to to use this technique. Uh, and as a result, they can translate a general uh, privacy or privacy by design principles, uh, which are very high level. Uh, into the language of objectives and implementation requirements uh, understandable by system architects and designers. And then they can, can negotiate, uh, all the stakeholders can negotiate this and come to a, technically, uh, a technical solution which, uh, which is acceptable from the risk management standpoint. And this is the core goal, not only uh, privacy engineering, but also the uh, entire systems engineering. Um, GDPR allows organizations um, to choose and to use any privacy engineering methodology that, uh, in, um, that include risk assessment. And uh, um, there are several uh, ready-to-use uh, technology, uh, ready-to-use methodologies, including uh, the one from Mitra, including the one from NIST, and uh, there is a already second uh, working draft ready for ISO, uh, 27550, which is going to be published as a standard, um, I think, definitely before May next year. And then, uh, uh, probably GDPR authorities, uh, uh, authorities uh, related to GDPR, they will, you, uh, they will actually 
um, navigate uh, organizations to this uh, standard because this standard uh, takes into consideration all methodologies existing uh, at this moment, including Mitra and NIST and uh, other methodologies. Um, uh, in addition, GDPR allows uh, use of any uh, data protection impact assessment framework uh, on the condition that uh, this framework um, complies with the requirements uh, described in Article 35, uh, Paragraph 7. And uh, uh, in special guidelines, which um, uh, has been uh, published, uh, these requirements of Article 35 are interpreted into a list of criteria which organizations may use uh, to check whether the uh, particular risk assessment methodology is good enough to comply with GDPR. Uh, and uh, the guidelines also include, includes uh, uh, in uh, its Annex 1, uh, the whole list of various uh, risk assessment uh, uh, frameworks or methodologies to choose from. Uh, uh, in uh, this is the status of what is going on with uh, on the st uh, on the you know uh, document uh, and uh, provisioning um, scale of, of the process and. Um, just formally, I would like to mention that uh, Article 29 Working Party, this is an advisory, almost board uh, to EU Commission. Uh, uh, this uh, Working Party has already published necessary, uh, minimally necessary sub-legislative documents. Uh, and you can see the list of them, but the, the, the point uh, that uh, should be made after this slide is basically is that basically uh, EU authorities are already ready to enforce the data uh, protection by design requirements because controllers and processors could use um, any privacy engineering methodology and any compliant data protection impact assessment methodology and must use guidelines published by Article uh, 29, Working Party. So the beast is uh, ready to prey on uh, those who get lost in this uh, GDPR labyrinth. And uh, in order to uh, come to the second uh, uh, question of this presentation, uh, I just would like to mention uh, that uh, the general data protection by design uh, uh, condition is that uh, the compliant processing system must not perform any operation resulting in a violation of functional requirements specified in the system design for protecting privacy and security of personal data. Uh, of course, uh, it's not easy to uh, even understand uh, what I has just been, uh, what I has just said, but uh, let's try to to to, to get uh, this into a uh, you know, graphical metaphors to understand, and then it will become easy to understand whether DLP is required or not. One important uh, note that processing system uh, architecture includes several components, um, software, humans, of course, uh, like employees, partners, clients, administrators, everybody who interact with the system. Uh, and the infrastructure, um, operating systems, computing hardware, network, uh, physical uh, assets, business organization. Uh, suppose that everything is, uh, uh, is consistent with the infrastructure, then we uh, can, from this general condition that I have mentioned in the, in the beginning of this slide, we can um, um, derive uh, two important criteria uh, uh, of uh, data protection by design compliance for a software human system. Basically, this is a, a subsystem of the whole processing system, but as we assume the infrastructure is, uh, works properly, then uh, let's concentrate on these two components, to, uh, which basically is the point of interest for uh, device log for us as a vendor to understand whether DLP is required or not. Uh, 
And uh, this criteria you can see here. Uh, and uh, what I would like to, to point that uh, com uh, that uh, neither uh, software components themselves automatically um, uh, should perform an operation violating data protection system requirements, nor humans, which behavior is unpredictable, of course, interacting with the system, uh, can use uh, the system to perform such an operation. Uh, and uh, in order to comply with this criteria, uh, the system, uh, there are two requirements for the system. Uh, first is uh, what I call functional consistency. And uh, it, is, uh, it means that aggregate set of operations, the entire operation uh, functional scope, uh, that system components uh, together, meaning software and humans, uh, can perform this functional scope uh, should be limited, must be limited to what is necessary and minim minimally necessary for the business process conforming to the requirements for data protection. And the second uh, uh, requirement, it is data consistency. Uh, in addition to functional consistency, in, uh, in addition to the fact that the system uh, only performs those functions that uh, you know system designers uh, required to do and business process required to to perform. In addition, uh, because uh, GDPR in general and uh, you know the system that must be compliant to GDPR, it works with uh, the personal data, and of course it works all uh, at the same time it works with uh, non-personal data. The, uh, it is not possible to, uh, to develop a system that works only with personal data. And uh, by working with uh, different categories of data, the system uh, should differentiate between them. They should dis uh, the system should distinguish and every operation, in every operation, uh, the data objects which are used in this operation, in, of course, in the specific operational context, they, uh, they must be actually of the informational category and type that this operation is designed to process. Um, and categories, uh, under categories I mean personal data, business non-personal data, and other non-personal data. Uh, why? There are three, category, three categories. Uh, personal data it's because GDPR, business non-personal data. Of course, um, in addition to privacy uh, uh, protection requirements, or data, uh, personal data protection requirements, uh, there is a lot of corporate sensitive uh, or you know, uh, confidential data that also must be protected, but uh, protected based on data security technologies and principles, but not on uh, privacy. Um, uh, privacy protection principles. And this data, uh, I call them business non-personal data. So the data that are used in the business process, but by their nature, they are not personal. And the uh, system can also, uh, uh, basically not in the system, but in the software um, environment, like operating system, there's a, uh, there are other data which are used for different, um, you know, uh, secondary function, uh, not functions, but uh, secondary, you know, uh, needs, uh, but uh, they don't have any relation to the system which are designed. Uh, but anyway, they exist uh, somewhere nearby. And uh, types, informational types of, uh, um, in this case, personal data components, they may include, uh, they include uh, actually personally identifying, well, uh, information on different types, like name, address, and uh, other uh, informational types you see here. And um, for the goal of the presentation, let's, uh, let's uh, present the, uh, the uh, data protection by desired compliance system in a metaphorical way, in a as a graphical metaphor. metaphor. Uh, as you can see, this, uh, uh, we split all the 
uh, data, data uh, content space on the three categories that I have just mentioned uh, on the previous slide. And the, the other X is, uh, X is, uh, 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 um, represents uh, op operation of different types and operation of the different, different types, uh, including specific context of every operation. And um, in this, uh, in this uh, you know, artificial space, uh, it is functional space. Um, the system's functional scope uh, concerning personal data, uh, we may draw this, you know, uh, this, uh, this figure, uh, and uh, um, we can see that, that there's a couple of uh, um, software, uh, software components in this case custom, although this is not, it's just a generic, I just probably made mistake. I should not use custom here, but anyway, there are two components, software components, and there is uh, another necessary uh, component uh, and actor of the system, which are humans. Um, and uh, why humans are uh, indicated separately from uh, software components, uh, because uh, they, uh, are required in the system to perform those operations, highly intelligent operations that uh, no software still can perform, like uh, doing some analytics and doing so so something very intelligent. Uh, uh, but in addition to this, the system necessarily includes uh, another uh, other functions which do not relate to personal data processing, but they relate to the processing of uh, other uh, business data. Uh, and uh, here we see the, and that this functional scope, of course, uh, in generally is different in, uh, in, uh, concerning the functions and concerning the uh, types of data. So this graphical metaphor enables uh, to easily explain the, um, uh, some, uh, the effect of couple uh, of uh, you know, spe specific features uh, of systems uh, on following uh, slide. But in addition, I would like to, to add some uh, elements. First, uh, the point A um, denotes uh, a, uh, a type of function a particular function. That uh, function is a saving operation, a customer's personal health care, uh, pro protective health care information to local encrypted storage. And this function, uh, as you can see, uh, is performed by the system, by software number one. And um, uh, it, at the same time, at the same time, another function uh, with the same type of software, it is uh, protected uh, healthcare information. Uh, the system does not have the function that uh, uh, uploads this uh, information for, for, in this example, to OneDrive, because OneDrive uh, is not controlled by the organization. And it is, uh, of course, a privacy violation to put uh, PHI to OneDrive. So this uh, function, uh, which uh, deno is denoted by point B, it, it does not exist in the system. So this uh, is a metaphor of ideal, of an ideal uh, data protection by design compliance system, uh, which, is, uh, which is actually, oops, sorry, which is actually uh, the left oval and the right uh, figure is that about uh, uh, other uh, business functionality which uh, does not, uh, does not uh, use uh, personal data but use, uh, uses um, uh, other b types of business data. And uh, uh, there are Two types of uh, specific uh, specific. There are two types of uh, specific. Uh, you know, um, uh, the specific uh, factors that influences um, uh, the ability to comply with the data protection by design. First, 
it is uh, the first factor relates to functional uh, consistency. And this factor is which uh, software component types are used uh, in the systems. Whether these are custom software components, uh, as uh, it, it was indicated, uh, it was shown uh, on the previous slide, or um, some uh, components of the same system um, are general purpose software, uh, commercial or um, off the shelf software codes, uh, which uh, uh, maybe a web browser, email applications, instant messengers, etc., etc. And uh, uh, it is usual, of course, uh, and it is normal, and probably it's. Uh, uh, the absolute majority of uh, modern software systems, they use uh, some types of general purpose software. And uh, there is a critical difference uh, between um, using custom and uh, general purpose components for um, uh, data protection by design uh, compliance. Um, the di uh, this difference, uh, the difference is that um, developers uh, do not have control over the code of general purpose components, like over the code of web browsers. Uh, they cannot change the code. And consequently, the functional scope of general purpose software cannot be changed by code modification. And uh, if the functional scope of uh, general purpose software uh, extends beyond the borders of what is required by, by, by uh, basically system design. We have a trouble uh, because uh, this will, there, there will be space when the, the system does not comply with the uh, privacy protection or data protection, personal data protection requirements. This is the, f the first uh, influencing factor. The second is data relates to data cons consistency. Uh, and um, there are two types of data, basically structured and unstructured. And the critical difference, um, um, uh, there is a crit critical difference in detecting uh, the presence and type, informational type of uh, personal data in structured and unstructured data. Uh, structured uh, data Oh, data objects have uh, a predefined uh, format, predefined by system designers. But, uh, uh, and um, in all the cases, this format corresponds to a specific information type. Uh, it means that system knows uh, a priori what type of information any structure data may contain, if it contains. And um, um, in order to um, check uh, the consistency of uh, the uh, data in a structured object. It is um, sufficient to just make formal data type validation, for example, reg uh, regular expression based, uh, and uh, to prevent uh, information of a wrong type to get into the structured data objects uh, during, uh, for instance, data collection or and in input operations. And on the other hand, unstructured data objects can contain, at the same time, a mix of data with various informational, of various informational types. And in order to um, identify, reliably identify which uh, types of, uh, which uh, types of content uh, this particular data object uh, contains, it is necessary, it is necessary uh, to uh, uh, to make, uh, to perform contact, real content inspection. Uh, and, and, oops. Yeah. So, uh, let's uh, quickly go through the two other, two, two cases uh, to show, uh, to show the, the, the logic of the presentation. Uh, uh, very quickly, if uh, uh, for the case when a system uh, only uh, only has uh, custom software components and structured data, basically uh, its functional scope uh, corresponds to the ideal case because uh, um, soft, uh, custom software com uh, components, their codes are 100% controlled by the developers 
uh, there's nothing, uh, and if they develop, uh, develop properly, there's nothing uh, uh, undeclared, uncontrolled. And at the same time, um, the, uh, the custom software components enables to control human behavior. Uh, humans cannot perform those operations, in this case, operation B, uh, that, uh, uh, that custom software number one uh, is not designed uh, to, to perform. So, and in this case, of course, uh, no need for special content-aware safeguards to comply with uh, data privacy by design required. Uh, I mean, the DLP is not required. It is ideal case, but practically unreal scenario, because in probably 99% of cases, uh, real system, they have some uh, general purpose components, in this case, web browser. But if you look at the f real f functional scope of web browser, it looks like this, because web browser doesn't care about which type of data uh, it uses, and it has its own, fun own wide functional scope, which is much wider than, um, than uh, is required, that uh, is required by um, uh, systems, uh, in this case, uh, and generally. Uh, uh, and uh, the point that I would like to make, <laughs> that uh, basically uh, uh, some specific, some special privacy enhancing technology components must be added and used in the system uh, to ensure um, uh, data protection by design compliance. And uh, uh, this uh, component in this case do, because of its functional, functional, uh, you know, functional requirements, it is. Uh, these are data leak prevention technologies. I don't have time to 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 explain further uh, and give you points, uh, and uh, I'm ready to answer your questions later on. Uh, sorry for not managing time properly. Uh, so the the conclusions uh, from. This presentation is uh, GDPR is uh, GDPR is ready and data protection by design requirement will be enforced in time. Uh, the second uh, conclusion is DLP is a necessary privacy enha privacy enhancing technology for achieving uh, data protection by design uh, compliance. And uh, the third point is, uh, as human behavior is one of the most dangerous factors for data security and privacy. So, uh, most effective for designing GDPR compliant systems will be DLP solutions focused on preventing uh, insider data leaks. This is exactly what device lock does, and if you have time, uh, you're welcome to, to, to visit uh, my small stand and I will provide you further explanations. Thank you for your time, for your attention. Thank you for your contribution, and uh, maybe questions? Okay. <laughs>